Hey everyone! Welcome to week four and our first virtual class. This is really cool. Um, so I'm going to do an overview of the presentation that we normally would do in class. I won't teach it. I'm just going to overview it. Um, I'm also going to talk about the assignments that you'll need to complete and your um, semester long uh, webliography project as well as your midterm. Okay, of course, the expectation is you've read the textbook and the chapter, chapter three. Um, so this is really just to complement that reading and have you kind of think a little bit deeper as we've been talking about with that textbook. All right, let's jump in. So this is the block that we normally go to and it will open tomorrow, Tuesday at 9 a.m. Uh, and of course, we'll stay open as the others have. And here's the link that we normally would go to for our class. So let's jump on in and kind of see um, what we'd be covering. So in this chapter, um, you've read about social transitions, um, thinking about how to best support students um, or adolescents, I should say. Um, and so really our, our first focus is thinking about how do you um, not only teach, but work with adolescents, right? And um, I know many of you said you want to be a teacher, so you can think of it in terms of being a teacher, but you can also think of it in terms of being a mentor. Um, and really asking yourself, um, how, how do we prepare the next generation? Um, you know, schools all over the world are really thinking about their purpose and, and why they exist. Um, and how do they really develop students' capacity, um, for the real world, but especially for, for work, right? For adult work. And so, uh, one of the things I want you to really reflect on is whether or not the, um, you know, the labor force has changed. Um, there's, there's data that suggests that in the future, there's going to be a high demand for vocational skills, um, that don't necessarily require college education. So how are we preparing our students for that? Right? There's been such a drive to get students to the university, which is really great. On the other hand, um, are they really prepared when they come out, um, to be able to kind of serve, um, in a working, in a working position? Um, so I really want you to think about these transitions and, and what this demands of us as the adults in their lives. Um, because remember, there's a huge disruption in society in the way that we did once did things in the way that we need to do them now. And really asking yourself, what are the skills needed for the 21st century? Um, a lot of schools are asking this question. They're asking, how do we create an environment that supports the fostering and development of these skills, right? And so I want you to watch this video that talks about um, startup companies and the kind of culture that they create that allows um, employees to be very innovative. Um, because a lot of schools are looking at startup culture and asking themselves, what is it that they have that we could learn from that will then help us in our continuing shifting and changing learning culture? Um, so I want you to think about these things um, in light of your reading, as well, of course, of thinking about the role that adults play and how do we really support this shift that they're going through? Because it's really a time of transition. Adolescence is a time of great transition. Um, I also want you to think about um, towards the end of the chapter, uh, it talked about neighborhoods and, you know, it talked about collective ef efficacy. Um, and really how, how do we, um, think about working with entire neighborhoods? And this is something schools, um, you know, haven't really, uh, I don't, I would say pretty have, you know, are still learning a lot about and need to improve on. Um, but remember your school resides in a community and the best people to understand that community are those who live there. So it's really like, um, building relationships with the community, right? So there's a lot of models for this. And I just want to complement the reading with some other models that are being explored. Um, for example, um, the Harlem Children's Zone was a model that was started many years ago by an African American man who just felt like maybe one of the ways he could begin to create change is just, you know, block by block. And so you can read more about his story and kind of what they're doing now with this. Um, there's also the Junior Youth Spiritual Empowerment Program, um, which really seeks to advance a community's um, development, not only materially, but also emotionally and spiritually, psychologically, um, through the arts and service. And so there's a link you can look more about with this program. 
Um, I also wanted you to really think about whether it's just um, communities of low income, um, of poverty, of color that are really struggling. Because um, this article that I'm sharing with you here, and again, it's in the notes, you can, it, it suggests that affluent neighborhoods are also really struggling, um, that many adolescents um, are really struggling in these communities. And of course, the question is, how do we support them? Um, for example, Palo Alto has the largest uh, suicide rate among adolescents. Um, so this is something for us to really reflect on and think about as well. Um, and then uh, after you've kind of reflected on these things and, and really journaled about them, um, back in our course, the weekly uh, quick write will be there. I'll leave it open for the entire week. It opens at 1030 a.m. Um, but I do expect you to put your quick write in there. Tell me your thoughts about your the presentation, your readings, um, the virtual class, because uh, that helps me know that you've been able to participate effectively and of course how this is serving you. And so after class assignments, um, I'm going to ask you to watch this small clip from Smoke Signals. You'll remember it from the first class. We watched a small video on this, maybe the second class. Um, but I want you to think about how rites of passages have been interrupted for many communities, especially traditional communities like indigenous communities, because of colonization, right? Because the book talks about rites of passage. And so um, I also want you to think of how we can begin recreating our own rites of passage. And so um, I share with you a little bit about my family. Um, my husband, when my son was, um, when I was pregnant with my son, he grew his dreadlocks um, so that he could make um, kind of like a, a physical um, commitment to our son. And he said he grew the locks in his, in his commitment to, to raise our son and to be present for him. And when our son was 18, he would be allowed to, to cut them. And so um, this second picture is my son. Um, we had a graduation party for him. Uh, from high school and he decided then he was going to cut his father's hair and so we had a, a ceremony to to do this um, and of course in the last picture it's a very moving picture of the two of them really kind of cementing that commitment that um, you know was really passed on to my son from his father uh, which is in our tradition will be returned back when he's an elder so what I want you to do is um, one of your assignments will be a reflection and I want you to think about what was your own rites of passage and if you don't feel that you had one, um, what would you do to create one? Uh, maybe for your future children um, or what you would have wished you had had. Um, and so that will be back here under reflection. So if you're not sure what you're supposed to do in a reflection, go back to the syllabus and see what the description is for a reflection. I also would like you to um, think about uh, um, kind of, uh, well, the second piece that I want you to do is thinking about 21st century job skills and school preparation. So this is a discussion. Um, you're going to, if you look back in Titanium, you'll see there's a video. You're going to watch this video about um, success in the new economy which was created by a friend of mine who works at um, community colleges. And then I would like you just to have a discussion on it. Remember, a discussion is a post by Friday and a response by two responses by Sunday. Um, and so um, then, of course, you also have the after class reading and um, read about chapter four for our next class, which will be face to face. All right. Um, I want to jump over um, and talk a little bit about your webliography. Um, actually, let me go to your syllabus first. So in your syllabus, it says webliography assignment. This is worth 15% of your grade. This is uh, going to be a semester long project. And what I'm going to ask you to do is find 10 web based resources and ideas that would support adolescents in the following areas social issues like race, culture, class, health, educational settings, language related services agencies, and social media or cyberbullying. You can think of other resources as well. Um, you can think about student health and school safety, how to reduce school violence, uh, violence addressing mental health needs. Um, that's totally fine. Um, I just don't want to have like 
um, five on health and then only five on the other one. So try and disperse them evenly, right? Um, do a couple in each area until you get to 10. This is an individual project. Do not work as a group. I want your own ideas and your own thoughts um, and your own research. So uh, there are four areas you need to make sure that get covered in this webliography. Um, so once you find a site, so for example, here's, here's an example I give you. Let's say you found a site called It's Your Sex Life. Um, so I would like you to put A, uh, kind of like bullet points, um, and say, what is the recommendation for this site? Why do you think this site is going to support whatever you think it's going to support? In this case, health and safety, maybe you find a site for social media or something like that. So talk about how you think this site is, um, you know, helpful to students in this area or adolescents. Um, in part B, just give me the title of the site. In part C, give me the URL, um, has to be active. And then part D, um, just give me a brief explanation of what I will find in this site as a resource for students, um, less than a hundred words. Uh, and please do not copy and paste their description. I want your thoughts about um, how this will support um, adolescents uh, and what resources adolescents and their families would find. Uh, so I'll have more, um, I'll have the sample available for you as well throughout the semester to kind of look back on. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit about your midterm as it'll be coming up. Uh, this is 20% of your grade. And in your midterm, what you're going to be thinking about is um, how are we developing active agents of learning, right? Um, adolescents are often thought of as rebellious or difficult. Um, and what I'd like you to do is create a multimedia presentation. You can use PowerPoint, Google Slides, Prezi, um, Animoto, some kind of multimedia presentation in which you're going to take the concepts that you've learned so far and demonstrate how um, uh, the full potential of adolescence has been misunderstood. Um, and so think about who is your audience and then build your presentation to address that audience. So for example, if you're talking to uh, teachers, what strategies or concepts do you want teachers to understand that will help them work more effectively with adolescents in order to make them active agents of their own learning? Um, maybe you're talking to parents. Um, what are some ways in which you can help parents be um, more effective at working with their adolescents? Um, this is the statement I want you to center your work around. Uh, trust in the capacity of this generation to disentangle itself from the embroilments of a divided society. So that's what we're saying. We're saying adolescents have the capacity to really um, change the society from a divided society into one that's more cohesive and unified. Uh, so I want you to really think about this, reflect on this. You have a few weeks before this is due. Um, I will put out a rubric soon and, um, and, and give you, and if you look in our schedule, you'll see the due date for for your midterm. It's on the sign-up sheet for uh, student presentations. All right. So with that, I'm going to um, say good luck and I will see you next week. Of course, I'll still be available online. So please uh, send me messages, send me an email, um, any questions, any confusions, and um, I, will, I will definitely make sure that I make myself available to you. Okay. All right. I will see you guys next week. Bye.